Thank you, Himaro, and uh, thanks for teaching us that uh, wonderful book. And Karakarwal uh, and David Changas here at and they would want to in New York to end the hazard from the one. And they didn't have a higher of the SG. They in a sort of way had in a hazard among two things high, but in terms of the model which the Ramstead, the Royal of Bosseton and Namas on station, we had the Yuxorbet Behazar had in a model who not the hazard who not high of the chapters. Тэгээд <laughs> Mongol or two, which in Shinner Tommy of the Mongol, the Nisakan or two, Chakoven, Manin of the Tiltigum, a church for Borland school, Chilter, the other, and Anglil, Yer Mongol, the Nurun, Yester, Hoya, and Borwin, don't Mongol, Mongol, but say yes, Chatka, Anglil, but say yes, Hoya, and Borwin, don't team my table jigger, to which I have been a German jig. And David was a New York way jigger. Many old Hungar Valu, Nerem Botachin, a company in the Electra at Chica. There was a three bus, Johabe, Bemba, Winter, Dorsen, Monglin, Upsailing, Upsailing, Sanguina, Yurunke, Nerem Chicken. David Changes, he is a Hajara Mongol. Uh, or Hazara from, I believe, is Afghanistan. And I would like to say a couple of words about him. You know, uh, when I was in college, uh, uh, we, I myself heard or read about uh, Hazara. It's at the time, we call it Mughal, and some well-known Mongols then wrote book in, well, when he was traveling in Afghanistan. And uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, language major, so I always interested in language. So uh, from a very young age, I was very curious about you know, uh, how they, their culture and language, how they looked and so on. So 10, uh, so ten years or so, we met in New Jersey and then uh, we invited them to my house and then he comes with his friends. Some of them exactly looks like us and even one guy <coughs> looks more Mongolian than I am. And uh, that was in a very, uh, very, not, very good experience for me. You know, it's a long, uh, so many years I was wondering how they look like and what is their language, and so we had long uh, discussion and so on. So uh, uh, David is also president of uh, Advanced Counting LLC in New York City and uh, president of Hazara Organization for Peace and Equality and General Secretary of Mongol Heritage Foundation and Executive President of Asian American Alliance in New York City. And he has a counting degree from CUNY, City University of uh, New York. Uh, welcome, David. <laughs> really thank you for your kind words about me. My glasses is not helping me. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'm thankful to Southern Mongolian Human Rights Information Center uh, for inviting me and for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, most of you know I'm Hazara Mongol, and I'm living in New York City. 
Uh, as Hazara Mangol, I want to share my experiences because we have similar problems and issues with our southern Mongolian brothers, with Kalmykia, with uh, Buryatia, and Tuva, and all other uh, Mongol uh, living outside Mongolia. So definitely we always can relate each other and we can exchange the information to understand each other better. Uh, as Hazara, we are suffering from last 100 years uh, for being Mongols. So we faced many genocide in recent history. Our 60% of population is lost and are killed in last 100 years. So very few of uh, us uh, we have communication with them and they know about us that still we are going through through those prosecutions, through those issues, through those discrimination. Uh, beside that huge tragedy in recent history, the problem that I feel which is worse than that is we lost most of our language and culture. So as our other panel and other friends said, like if you want to wipe out a nation or destroy a nation, you don't have to kill them, you just take their language and their tradition, their way of life from them, so nobody can recognize them. So once you lose your recognition, so you are lost anyway. So we are trying to preserve our culture, we are trying our best to keep our language as much as we could. Uh, we are going through different issues, problems, through all these uh, decades, but the good thing is still we are surviving, we are living, and uh, we survive all this hard time, and still today we are 10 to 12 million Hazara Mongol all around the world. Uh, besides all this, we have good achievement in our region, and we are quality people. People respect us being Mongol, because they know whatever they do to us, still we come up better than them. We are better in education, we are better in technology, we are better in sports. We are, we can compete them in any way of life. And we, are, and it is for me, it is a matter of an honor to first call myself Mongols and no matter what they do to me, I believe that I will keep my identity I will survive and I will come up better than them. So this is the part of uh, our life of way. One thing that I want to mention that it is not a complaint but it is a friendly, uh, uh, I, I would say it's a complaint. From I'm not a religious person. Uh, so uh, like if we don't relate to each other, if we don't understand each other, so some of our problem is related. Uh, as most of you know, we have one of the biggest statue of Buddha in our Banyan province in Afghanistan. Uh, in March 2001, it was destroyed by this terrorist group Taliban. So we were hoping that the Buddhist organization and all other Mongols, because that was our heritage, that was almost four to five thousand year old statue. So we were requesting, we were like, thinking that they're going to help us out, but because of not having proper communication and understanding, so the big tragedy happened and we lost that big heritage. So this is one of the examples that if we work together, so we can, in the, in, in the future, hopefully we're going to come up with some kind of solution. I, I always ask myself, like, why we have all this problems, why we have all these sufferings as being Mongol. Uh, as we know that there are different solutions and different intellectuals are talking about this and always they have different solutions, but one of the things is all of us are keep repeating that we should be united, we should be together, we should understand each other in a better way, the way we are. Uh, when I went to Mongolia, I was requesting Mongolian government and different request, one of them was we should have a continuing education or we should have a research and a study at least for three to six months and bring intellectuals from southern Mongolia, from uh, 
Kalmykia, from Guria, from Tuva, from Hazara, and put them together, all those intellectual, and they should share their history, knowledge, their problems and issues, and they should come up with some solution. This kind of seminar is the best. These are the seminars that we bring our problems, our issues. And now we know what Southern Mongolian brothers and families are going through. But again, out of this kind of seminar, we achieve not too much of a progress by solving their problem. We always feel sympathy for them, we talk about their issues, we bring their issues up. Uh, uh, I, I personally believe that if we have a good systematic approach, then we can come up with better solutions. Like if we have three or five intellectuals from all different nation of Mongols in Mongolia or in America or anywhere which is, wherever it is possible, if they get together and sit, not for one session, not for one seminar, it is their job, it is their education. They know and they leave and they talk about those things. So if they get together for many months, I believe 100% that it's going to come up with the best solution possible. Uh, there are uh, things that we can do on our side. We try our best always. We try to communicate with each other, especially uh, Southern Mongolian uh, Human Rights Information Center that I saw all these years are very active in all Mongolian programs and they are <coughs> trying to work with the United Nations, try to work with all human rights organizations to bring the issues and the problem and to request them to solve it. But I believe everyone has their own agenda. So right now China, if we accept or if we deny, it's economic power. So most of the country, they don't want to get involved with any conflict. So I believe what we can do is initially we can request most of international human rights organization and our other Mongols organization all over the world just to have one voice. If we are talking about a Southern Mongolian problem, so we should have one voice, one agenda, what we're gonna be, what we're gonna do about it. What we have or what power we have or how much control we have over China to force them or to make them not to, not to do those discrimination and those problems that they are creating, continue creating. So the way I saw their panels, hopefully we're gonna, we will have a lot of uh, good people among Chinese people, among Tibetan people, among our other friends internationally, that we can approach them and tell our problem that what Southern uh, Mongolian brothers are going through. In the same way, if Kalmykia has a problem, or if Guriath has a problem, or Hazara has a problem, if we cannot do nothing, at least we can share their pain, we can share their sorrow, we can understand their problems, we can morally support them that don't worry, we are with you. I mean, this is the only thing that in today's world nobody is going to have complained about it, that's why you are talking about their basic human rights, whether it is in Kalmykia, whether it is in Southern Mongolia. Nobody will object. Although, like, politically, uh, Mongolian uh, government uh, is not getting involved in these things, <coughs> which is their uh, strategy, it is good or uh, not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. But at least they also can morally support all of us. Uh, I personally believe always, I discuss with my friend, that we were the people who were keeping the Mongol Empire as the empire. We were the people that we were the soldiers outside Mongolia. So now that we are out, we left outside and now we have mainland Mongolia, so we should demand that don't forget us. The way we feel about you, the way we respect you, the way we, we love Mongolia mainland. So we want them to have the same feeling for us. We don't want them to say like, questioning, are you Mongolian? Questioning like, well, I should do something for you or not. So these are the things that in the future I hope that we can bring some change and we can do our best to solve this problem. Uh, again, at the end I would say that being together, like having scientific approach, there is no doubt 
that we can solve most of our today's problem. At the end, I'm thankful again to Ekpat Prada and uh, Mongolian, uh, uh, Southern Mongolian Human Rights Information Center that invited me and especially I uh, welcome Mukhbayar, our brother, he's a good supporter for all Mongolians in Mongolia. Each time I went, I was really happy to see him. I was really happy that he was struggling for all Mongolians outside Mongolia. He's writing about them, he's discussing about them, he's going traveling in every part of the world, wherever they invite him, he's there and he struggles about us. So we should respect him and I'm really happy to see him today. Thank you so much again. If you have any questions, so you're welcome.